And our special guest on Podcast Unlock this week is uh, a local man. You may have seen him in the news recently <laughs> because he's making a new little indie game startup thing you may, may, may have heard of. It's called Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Studio head Michael Condry, good to have you here. Hey, thanks, Ryan. This is, this is going to be fun. It is going to be fun. You better buckle up for another next uh, half hour, 45 yeah, minutes no or so. Yeah, I have no idea what's coming, but I'm, I'm glad to be here. Well, I, normally I have a slew of questions written in advance, but I've actually already asked you a lot of uh, sort of the mo my most pointed questions back, you know, we talked uh, for earlier in the month in IGN first, and we, that piece is up if you want to go check it out. I kind of, with you, uh, having sat down with you here and there, you have a very fascinating personal story of, with your career, and I thought it might be interesting to get into that because, you know, so many people listen to the show and they write into IGN and they tweet and they say, you know, how do I get into the industry? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I want to make, maybe I want to either do what IGN does or I want to make a game or they have these, people have these dreams and these, these goals and aspirations. And uh, I think your story is a textbook case of, it's a good story. It's, it's, you know, if you focus and you dedicate yourself of what, what is possible? You have gone from a uh, low-level grunt at EA <laughs> up to running the studio for what will be, let's not kid ourselves, I mean, one way or the other, it's probably going to be the biggest game of the year. So uh, take me back to, I know I've heard the story, but for the benefit of our audience, you know, you weren't even supposed to be in the video <laughs> game industry. I wasn't even supposed to be here, Ryan. No, it's true. Um, I don't know, fascinating is the word I'd use. I, I think so. But it's very kind of you Humor to say. Me. Yes, no, it's it's very, very kind. I I think I'm just a very fortunate individual who happens to be part of an amazing team. Um, but yeah, it's true. I didn't I didn't set out to be a game developer. Yeah. Um, now as a gamer growing up, um, like you, you know, I can remember playing games throughout my life way back. You know, the Atari was invented when I was in that age. And playing on the Apple IIe, and man, you name it, the Texas Instruments TI-99, like <laughs> the days, Yes, right? calculator exactly, games. Exactly, exactly. So it's been a long road from um, gamer to game developer. But yeah, I was, uh, I was into um, academics, sports, gaming, so I was a pretty balanced kid. Yeah. And um, I ended up at the University of Washington. Uh, go Huskies, I'm a Husky alum. Pac-12, 3-0, that's right. <laughs> and uh, Get the plug in there I get the for plug the alma mater. In, that's right. That, <laughs> Got to be proud. And um, then, what, did, what, was I, what was I doing then? I don't know. Gaming was part, I mean, I remember playing. Like, we played Tecmo, and there was just a ton of stuff going on yeah. in gaming, but not as a game development um, sort of career. Got into um, scuba diving as a dive instructor. Loved that. Um, left the University of Washington to go pursue sort of my dream of um, being on a Caribbean beach, which I did. Um, I know, wandering That's story, crazy. right? That's nuts. I know. Um, so I was in pre-med um, at the University of Washington and then left, went down to Cayman Islands. So, a, all right, hold on. Start oh. right there. Pre-med, you're a bright guy. That means automatically <laughs> bright guy. Now, granted, maybe you could have failed out of pre-med and I wouldn't say it, but clearly pre-med, you got to be, got to have some brain in your head to even get in the program. What do your parents, do, are, do they have dreams of, of oh, I, our son is going to be a doctor, he's going <laughs> to he's gonna have a, make an amazing living, and he's going to you know, be a well-respected member of society? Yeah, I think, you know, I have to give my parents credit. They're, they're amazing. My mom and dad are both amazing and supportive. My father, um, you know, he was supportive of me choosing what was going to make me happy, but yeah. he very much instilled the sense of, of, you know, pursuing an academic degree. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, starting in pre-med, well, the first, you know, leaving the University of Washington before I got my degree to go become a beach bum, essentially, <laughs> caused some stress for him, no <laughs> doubt. Um, and, you know, they, they were supportive, and I, you know, give him credit because, you know, after two years in the Cayman Islands, which, you know, was remarkable. <laughs> I was 21, single, running boats and diving every day. It could have been intoxicating to the point of not returning, but yeah, you know, I'd made a I'd made a pact with my dad that I would I would go back and finish my degree, and I did. Um, I I came back having. Do you just wait? Hold on. Do you just get bored of of uh, hooking up with you know <laughs> coeds that come down on spring break and what? Wh how do you how do you, how do you consciously leave that life behind to go back to school? Yeah, I I. Boy, I got to give that up to my my parents. Somewhere deep in my brain, 
um, they must have planted the right seeds because you're right. It was, it, it was hard to leave. It was a remarkable. Were you making any money down there as a beach bum, or did you just was it that you ran out of money and said, "All right, I better get back"? No, no, I was making plenty to live on. Not, you know, I mean, obviously, you, you're not going to have a career as a as a dive instructor in the Caribbean, but at that time, 21 in the sun all day long, like you say, um, <laughs> maybe meeting more people than you should. It was. Um, <laughs> It was some times of sowing some wild oats, to say. Right. And, uh, you know... T- it, tune out, Mrs. Condry. <laughs> yeah, and, and so coming back was, you know, I actually came back thinking, okay, I've got to finish my degree, yeah. and then I'm going to go back and find a way to make that a career. So you really, uh, you really thought about your parents when you, when you decided to go back. Was it, was it, was it really to... Yeah, think, was it for them or for you? I'm just kind of curious. From more of a person, I'm sorry if that's a personal question. No, no, not at all. It uh, it was for me. Good, um, but I had an obligation. Not an obligation. That's too strong of a word. But I'd made a sort of commitment. Yeah, and I think you know all these life decisions, probably like yours, were just sort of folk, folks in the, sorry forks in the road that led me to where I am today. So it actually at the time I, you know, I was there thinking, okay, well I'm going to go back to get my degree, but yeah. I'm going to use the time in the Caribbean and, and what I enjoyed to figure out how to make that a sustainable career. And so okay. I left there moving out of pre-med, but using my time in the Caribbean and my love of that, thinking, okay, I'm going to move into um, natural sciences. I'm going to figure out how to do this as a career. And so it, I wanted to become a research marine biologist. Okay, so back. now your parents are like, all right, all right, we're back connect, on the right yeah, track Yeah, we're on the right here. track here. We're going to connect No these more dots. doctor, but, uh, you know, bioscientist sounds could, pretty good. Yeah. Still could be a, a responsible uh, a son. And, uh, and so I came back, and I sort of took a, a little bit of a right turn. By the way, I'm sitting here telling the story thinking this has probably got to be the oddest podcast that you guys have done. Like, nobody but, tunes in to Call of Duty to hear about my story but in marine biology, we, do they? We've, We're doing Call of Duty all month long on this website. This is, uh, again, this, you know, it's a tale of... If you just keep your head focused in the right direction, which there is, there is a light at the end of this at, at end of this rum fueled tunnel <laughs> that we're on, that we're in right now. This, I just you know again, I think your story is a fascinating one, and it's a, a I think it's it can be a bit of an inspirational one for listeners that that have you know game industry dreams. So please continue. Okay, well thank you for that. Yeah, so I came back, I shifted into um, marine biology studies, and uh, decided to get my graduate degree. Yeah. So. Um, did my senior thesis that got published, and I was on to get my master's and then my PhD. Which means that so at that point you've got you've got a degree. Now you're going for the that's PhD. Right. Yeah, so that's you're right. you're pretty far in at this point. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, it, uh, you're right. I mean, academics then became my life again. Um, had a great time at the University of Washington, finishing that up, and decided to take that one step further. Again, in the pursuit of eventually making it back to the Caribbean. But this time more in a scientific sort as of, a grown up as a, as a <laughs> yes exactly as a grown up, which didn't happen. I'm still not a grown up, but I'm also not a scientist, so uh, oh for two there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. But uh, and then just coincidentally, I remember being at the University of Washington and in in, in the school paper, um, Electronic Arts, which at that time had just opened up EA Seattle. Yeah, had um, an opening for a, um, a production assistant um, QA at the time. At the EA Which Seattle is studio. basically for those that don't, that don't know QA quality assurance, you're a tester. Exactly. Absolutely. So this is the second time now my parents were challenged with the son. <laughs> oh, who's... no. We had him on the right track. What's happening? <laughs> exactly. On his way to get his graduate degree and decides instead to become a game tester. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Um, <laughs> and so you know, it actually worked out. It was over the summer. And, yeah. um, you know, they, that studio had Need for Speed, which was a game I grew up loving. And so I, and I knew it was only a, you know, a summer gig. Sure. And, uh, and so I took it. And um, thankfully, I remember, I remember getting hired there. And, and my boss, who's still now a friend of mine, he's gone on to do other things in the game industry. Um, he's, he told me afterwards, he's like, yeah, we couldn't figure you out. He said, either you were, the, you were the guy that was the most full of shit, right? Or we scored with you because <laughs> nobody ever comes in with a portfolio of, you know, published senior work right applying for this type of role but i did it and uh you know i think they saw me some um i don't know some self-starting sort of you know willingness to learn and 
And I think at that time I was, you know, I was just, I was filling a summer and I was curious and I was having fun with it. And yeah, you're, you're clearly, even already at this point in the story, you're clearly a driven guy. If you want to do something, it sounds like you're going to figure out a way to go do it. Yeah, I think so. I think it was part ambition and, and part academic training. You know, I got to give it up for the, for, you know, I was taught how to be sort of detail oriented and think critically about challenges. And so from there, I remember at the end, I was, I was going to head back. And this time I'd gotten accepted into the University of Florida. And um, at the time they said, hey, look, we're, we're experiencing a lot of growth in the studio. There's opportunities. Uh, we like you. You like us. You're good at what you're doing. Would you consider, you know, sticking around and making this, you know, school will always be there. Why don't you give this a little longer? Oh, the siren, the the sirens call. Exactly. School, school will always be there, my God. <laughs> and and true, it uh, it I guess that that worked, and and then I had an opportunity to move into the, the production side, which um, at that time again, production assistant, at very junior level, like the bottom, call it grunt, right. work, whatever. Are you, you want. are your parents having to be talked off a ledge at this point? Or are Probably. They, are they hanging in there? I, you know, at this point, I don't know if they just, at this point, they've they, they chalked it up to another misadventure or or what, but... Um, Bring your yeah. parents in here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and and so I did, and I think that was, that may be, might have been the most challenging then, because the academic program I got accepted to was, you know, was pretty um, pretty hard to get into. Yeah. And uh, I remember there were, there were friends of mine, who, even people close to me who understood why I made the decision, but questioned it. Like, yeah. really? You finally got into your program that you wanted, <laughs> and you're going to stick around. And I did. And man, I got to tell you, I worked with some great people at EA. So, well, so at this point, you decide, okay, I'm going to. What What's your? What do you see as your goal or your end game in game development? You think, okay, I join. I'm a QA tester for the summer, and then oh, it's kind of cool. Maybe I'll stick around. Where do you see what? What is the? I mean, do you set the goal at that point? Man, I want to run my own studio someday, or or is it is it smaller scale than that? What's, you know, what's the what's the drive? What's the goal yeah. then? Yeah, it's a curious question. I think somewhere at that point in my career, I was still in the mindset that eventually I'm going to find my way back to the Caribbean, right? Right, in some form, whether it's research scientist or dive instructor, or maybe I don't know, one day open a dive shop of my own. Like I think. I was still trying to... Call of Duty Caribbean Warfare coming in 2017. Confirmed right here. <laughs> exactly. No, but, it, you know, it's interesting. I think, you know, when you're at that point of your, your life, you, you're still trying to hone exactly where your compass is yeah, pointed. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And so I stuck it out and, and um, was having, you know, was enjoying it. I mean, look, it's a fascinating industry to work in, surrounded by amazing people. I mean, the most creative artists, all the way to the biggest brained engineers, um, you get to... Ex- interact with some of the most fascinating people around and and so I did that and I had the chance to work on FIFA and then the James Bond franchise was just starting up at Redwood Shores here in um, San Francisco Bay Area and um, I decided to throw my hat into that ring and then it was sort of off to the races from there I mean <laughs> I know right sometimes when I, I reflect are you sure this is still fascinating no yeah so all right so what but when you're all right, so when you're doing that, you start on the bonds. Like, what are you? What are you doing? What is your role within yeah. EA, and how is it either evolving or changing as you go? And and are those are those conscious decisions, or are those just like you're just sort of going where the game development wind takes you? <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, for for those people looking for a to map out my experience to try and follow it, I would encourage you not to because <laughs> I don't know that I mapped it out then and probably still haven't now, but. You know, the production role is really a, a coordination role, right? It's a support and yeah. coordination role. And, and I think because I knew that I didn't have direct skills to the industry. like I didn't Artistic or programming? Right. Or a degree like you can get today. Um, you know, I took the philosophy that I just, I was going to work harder than anybody around me. And I was going to be, you know, sort of the most supportive of the of the team around me, right? So you become that guy that's like, the first guy in who's got the coffee on, lights on, waiting for everyone, be helpful, you know, do whatever it takes to help the team, make the team um, as productive as they possibly can be. Right. And through the course of doing that, learn what it takes to make great games. Now, I'd, I had the fortune of, of working around some really incredible mentors. And um, so I, I guess I was going to uh, sort of on-the-job University of Game Development training there, right? I think the academic training set me up to understand and learn and learn process as well and, and 
then you know the on the job sort of working with some of the most creative guys um, in Hollywood with the James Bond franchise mm-hmm. and in Electronic Arts with with the game development studios there. You know, I just was able to kind of soak it all in. So we still have an answer. So w- what roles are you serving on these various projects? Are you sort of moving up from, you know, uh, ass- associate producer yeah. to on up? Like what's, uh, how does the career evolution yeah. go? Yeah, so for me, I started, yeah, at, at the very bottom of production assistant. And that, um, at that point, you you just do whatever you can to help the team or help your boss. I went through the whole production sort of, over a course of a number of years, um, from assistant producer to associate producer to then producer, right? And as you can imagine, as you're growing through the production sort of job family, you're taking on greater and greater responsibilities and ownership, sure. which was a lot of fun. Um, and then got to the point where I was running teams um, at Electronic Arts and elsewhere in the industry. It's called the development director sort of role. What's the first game that that happens on? It's the first game for you with under that title. Yeah, so I think for me, I, uh, the development director role, what would have that have been? Somewhere in the Bond series where I made so the jump from production. Was it everything or night, nothing? Not, I'll say Nightfire's the one I remember really liking from that era. Yeah. Not not to speak ill of the others, but but yeah, Everything or Nothing I think was pretty well regarded as well. Everything or Nothing was a great game. I mean, I I did uh, I was able to contribute to all of them there. So my first one was The World's Not Enough on N64, follow up to Goldeneye. <laughs> which, no pressure. No pressure. Uh, right. Um, proud of that game, but yeah, it was Standing in the Shadows of Goldeneye, which is still to this day sort of a hallmark in, in first-person shooters yeah. at, at that time. Um, Everything or Nothing was a great one. We had an w- amazing team there. Um, they went on to do uh, Nightfire and then um, From Russia with Love. Um, so I don't know, somewhere between Agent Under Fire and Eon and Nightfire in that series that I'd just grown and taken on more responsibility to the point where by the time I guess somebody, I convinced somebody I knew what I was doing. <laughs> Um, it's a charade I still like to play. Um, then you begin, then you run a team, right? Yeah. Um, and with you know your creative partner, and that's eventually what led me to um, partnering up with Glenn Schofield. Um, we worked together on From Russia with Love, uh, okay. running that team, and then Dead Space, which you know obviously um, was kind of a highlight. In well, so career. let's let's pause right there. So then, how do you? How do you go from okay? You've been running teams with with an EA. How do you? How do you <clears throat> did you? Which came first, the game Dead Space or the studio? Do you pitch? Hey, I want my own. I, I want my own studio with Glenn, and then we're going to figure out something to make. Or do you go to them and say, Hey, I've, you Glenn, you and Glenn have a great idea for this thing. We need a team to do it. What's yeah. what's that process? Yeah, and again, you know, as I describe this, you know, this is just my personal journey, right? Like, sure. And, you know, for all the amazing developers out there and producers out there, you know, I don't want to pretend like what I went through equals what they've gone through or will go through. Um, but I think uh, for me, you know, you, you definitely have to, you have to commit um, and, and work hard to make opportunities come, come through for yourself. And so, like, it, for me, it was just a matter of pushing myself really hard to to commit everything I could to this industry because every time we did, you know, the team would develop something great and there'd be something new on for the next step. And we knew we had a, we had a really remarkable team on from Russia with Love. Um, and I think Glenn, who is the most creative partner I've ever worked with, it has some fantastic sort of forward vision ideas. And he had this thought for, for this game he wanted to create in Dead Space. We knew what team it would take to start it. Right. And so I think pitching the the starting team and that concept to EA was um, both happened at the same time, right after From Russia with Love. There's a whole story there that um, I probably won't elaborate on too much here, but it was, you know, we fundamentally thought, hey, there's a different way to develop, right, mm-hmm. that can get to the kind of quality that that fans deserve. And we wanted to try that on Dead Space. And so we had a small, smart starting team. There were two of us, obviously, Glenn and I, and, um, and about a dozen others that said, hey, let us have a shot to introduce this new, this new IP, Dead Space, to EA. It was a big risk, risk for us, yeah. risk for them. Yeah, that was, and that was at the time EA was uh, was willing. Well, they were not that they're not now, just but in that time they, you know, they had Mirror's Edge in the in the back burner at that point. Um, which I think I feel like there's another one I'm missing, another big new IP. Uh, yeah, and, and and right before that, actually, the environment there wasn't really um, very open to new IPs. And, mm, and, and okay, in some cases it was. 
it was known as, as you know, new IPs were the, kind of the hardest place to be at Electronic Arts. You're right. Shortly after Dead Space, there was um, Army of Two, and there That's was, it. yeah, Mirror's Edge, and a number of things came out. But I do, I think that there was, uh, it was right at that transition. I don't know if it was directly related to Dead Space, but I like to think in some small part, we sort of pushed that, sure. pushed that forward with this concept of, hey, their new IPs could be something attractive there. And so... And that was a great experience. And again, just, you know, it's an odd, odd way for me to say it, but the production role, the ro- you know, the roles I've played, it, it's really just about helping the, the team reach its potential, right? Like, it, it wasn't me. Like, the team and the, the creative energy and the technical execution, like, I've just been fortunate to be around really amazing developers. So is it, when, it, when it's that point, when you're at that point in your career, uh, are you... Is it man? Is it effectively project management where you're allocating resources? Is it? I mean, how much of it's creative versus how much? Of, I'm just sort of curious. And I, I ask a lot of developers that come in here, "What's your day to day life yeah. like?" Because it's like, to the gamer, it's oh, well, they it's a bunch of people sit at keyboards and then a game pops out like two <laughs> years later. But the day to day, I mean, so let's say, uh, you know. I know you're you're more or less at the end of a, the project now, but you know when a project is, you've got your idea and you're moving. Like, what happens when you show up for work, for, and then how does your day go? Yeah, yeah. There's there's two common misconceptions, right? One, like you say, sometimes people say, "Oh, you you make games for a living? That must be fun. You sit around <laughs> and play games all day long." And it's not that. Um, you do get to play, which is awesome. Um, but you the definitely same don't level do that. over yeah. and over. <laughs> And um, and uh, then there's a lot of the real work, right? Which is, you know, everything from the creative, which is a ton of fun, but has its own challenges. Yeah. Um, to the operational side of running the business, right? And all the responsibilities of how do you manage and coordinate a team? To how do you, you know, execute against the business constraints? Because look, at the end of the day, games are expensive to make, and there's a whole business behind that. That's so, the publisher side of things. So right? with that, do you have to do you have to live in spreadsheets half the day and want to jump out a window (laughs) uh yeah you do spend a lot of time managing resources and planning and that can look like living in in spreadsheets um and you know teams that do it well using whatever method um you know there's all kinds of things from agile development to more water file development and i'm not here to try i don't even know what you just said (laughs) well you know to be honest it's, it's sort of you have to find what works for you and your team yeah right and for me, I think because uh, you know I have a more of an academic background, a more scientific background, um, I do rest on sort of data-driven sort of decision making. But it's a very creative process, right? And you know you have to be delivering something that's super compelling and well executed to quality for fans. So for me now, I think I I have the fortune of probably spending half my time in sort of the operational and planning side, and half right. the time in the creative. Um, in the production role, of course, right? right? Like, there's obviously roles on the team that are very much just operational, and there's some that are very much just creative. Um, I think y- no one should come in this industry who doesn't want to participate in the creative, obviously, because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, everybody has to be a game maker and be contributing to making a, a really remarkable creative product for fans. So, all right, so then let's fast forward a little bit. Dead Space goes over very well. It's a big new IP launch yeah. for EA, crit- critically acclaimed. Uh, it spawns a couple sequels, but but you and Glenn decide uh, for whatever reason. I mean, it's not my place to ask, nor is it your place to say whether you know. He's like, okay, uh, what's the next step for us? Uh, and then, so yeah, which what was the chicken and egg here? Was it uh, did you was did Sledgehammer come before Call of Duty did, or did uh, were they a package deal? How yeah. did how do you get you know you, you go out and you you start your own thing? And then how do you decide what's next? Yeah. Or you just is it like you're a baseball free agent and you've just come off of a new IP launch and you've got publishers knocking on your door saying, hey, sign with us, let's do this, let's do that. Yeah, I think it's it's some of all of what you just described. I mean, again, only on my, you know, individual experience I can speak for, but Dead Space was really amazing. And I th- it was because, you know, the team just put their hearts and souls into that. And that was that was that I just I'm so thankful I was a part of that journey with with those developers who are out there. Hopefully some of them are listening. Um, 
And some of it is you, along the way, you think about, hey, how do I do this better or different? What do I want next? How do I envision a better way to, to make games or build teams, right? How does, yeah. is there, a, is there a, um, a new way to foster a culture that can deliver you know, creative excellence? And some of it, of course, is you know, opportunities, doors open when you deliver something great. And I think those combinations, Glenn and I together had um, talked a lot about you know, what would, if we could start with a blank canvas, right? What would our version of a, of a studio and a studio culture look like? And I think at that time, Dead Space was pretty critically regarded and mm -hmm. it opened up a few doors and um, not all um, were as attractive as others, but there were, there were a lot of opportunities for the team and for Glenn and I. Um, now, at that time, it was just Glenn and I trying to figure out what we wanted to do next, and we both came to the realization that, you know, working with Activision on Call of Duty under the independent model, um, studio model, was pretty attractive. And, and I think being part of Call of Duty and the, and the fan base, right? Like, really, you're going to work your butt off in this industry. I won't lie. Everyone's well, every developer to, does, absolutely. Yeah, just like you and I do, like, you pour your hearts and souls into it. And so you want to deliver something you're proud of. You also want to deliver something that fans love. And... Call of Duty fans love, right? And as we were gamers first and fans first of the franchise. So to contribute to that, um, working with, you know, studios like Treyarch through Mark Lamia and Infinity War through Dave Stoll, like to be in that family of, of developers was very attractive. But bigger than that, I think we, we both realized, like, to really start a culture of how we wanted to develop, we needed to be able to build it from scratch. We what does that mean? What is what is the way you want to develop mean? Yeah, you know, after ten years or fifteen years of of working in a in a large organization like Electronic Arts, and I say this with you know nothing but thanks and gratitude. I learned yeah. a lot. I have friends there. I respect everything about it's peace how and love. EA, peace and love, and and sincerely, right? Yeah, like there are friends there still to this day that I know deep down understand just how valuable that time was for me. Um, but you know, when you when you think about how cultures of teams are built. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of institutional knowledge that comes over time that's hard to sort of redirect or change. And the idea that we could, from zero, right, build the studio in the model we want, in the facility we want, with the values we want, and then draw, you know, best-in-class talent to that idea was pretty pretty attractive. Now, hardest decision of my career. Far harder no than, than leaving the University of Washington to go be a, <laughs> a beach bum, or far harder than not pursuing my academic degree. Leaving EA after 12 years was was challenging. And also the, the best decision I've ever made. So is there a, I mean, is there a moment where, so obviously you've, you've, you've gone on this incredible career and life journey uh, to get you know, to this point where you're starting your own studio. Is there a moment where you wake up you know, whether, I don't know if it's whether you look at a paycheck one day or whether it's just like you sort of have some sort of reflective moment where you take stock, but do you ever, is there a point, like a tangible point where you just at some point stop and realize and go, wow, this is like, this is incredible what I've, what I've got to here. Or is this, again, has it just always been part of the focus and part of the goal for you to get to the top of your field? Yeah, I don't think I ever sat out set out to like nowhere if you'd if, if you'd asked the michael condry from 15 years ago where he thought he'd be today this wasn't even in you know yeah. the wildest idea that to run a studio or have a chance to work on call of duty or frankly be held in the same breath as as infinity ward and treyarch right that's that's remarkable i think I don't know. It's it's always hard for me to talk about my own journey because I think I'm I'm super fortunate and I just, you know, a lot of luck and a lot of being surrounded by people far more talented than me. But you do, you get to a point where you look back and you're like, holy shit, like how, how did we get here? Like it's yeah. through deliberate day-to-day -day decisions, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I do have to pinch myself sometimes to think, wow, this is this is remarkable. And remarkable just because, you know, I look across this industry and I know how hard everybody works right there's there's not a developer out here who doesn't put their hearts and souls to trying to make something great for fans um somehow we were able to build an idea you know we had an idea for the kind of studio we wanted to run and we had our five-year anniversary this year and i remember talking to some of the 
senior developers who followed us across about, you know, just how remarkable it was to get to this point. And I remember one of them I respect a lot, one of the engineers on their team, he said, well, I don't know why you're surprised, Connor. This is exactly what you told us we were going to do. This is why we came here. You said our five-year yeah. plan was to get to this day, and now we're here. And I think that, that moment kind of humbled me a little bit to sit back and think, yeah, you know, you're right. We did have a five-year plan for Sledgehammer to try and make an impact on the industry <laughs> and on our, on our family of developers. And so, yeah, it, it's pretty humbling. So uh, the moral of the story, though, for, again, for for anybody listening that says, oh, you know, I want, I want to make games for a living. Yeah. I think that'd be awesome. I mean, but it sounds to me like the point of the story is, the moral is the lesson to take is that you've, I mean, I suppose this applies to life in general, but just nothing will ever be handed to you. Nothing, you know, it's you, it doesn't just, you, you don't, you can't just sit around and wish to be a game developer or to be whatever it is you want to be that it sounds to me like you've got to have a focus and you've got to, I mean, yeah, you know, you talk about you've had a lot of help and a lot of luck. And, and I know I look at, I'm very fortunate to get to do what I do. Uh, and to have anybody, like one person that would even listen to a <laughs> podcast I would do. But it, it does, it takes, you have to have that goal, right? To say, man, I am, you can't just want to do it. You have to go do it. Even if it's, you know, in your case, you just took a the, the lowest level QA job. And then after that, the lowest level production mm-hmm. job. So that sounds to me that the point is, the lesson is, to just to go do it. Don't dream about it. Don't wait for someone to hand it to you to actually go do it. Yeah, I think, you know, again, my journey, I don't know if anybody should try and make a point out of my journey because it's <laughs> it's just crazy Condry journey. But and you talk to Glenn, my partner, and um he'll he'll describe a much more normal, you know, <laughs> sort of way into games where he went to art school and then he used yeah. that to get into video game art and then he pushed himself as an artist. Um I can tell you, you know, having worked, you know, I don't know, if, uh, close to 20 years now, this industry will ask everything of you, mm-hmm. right? And it'll pay you back for that effort. So find your talent and yeah, give it everything you have. For mine, I've, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'm certainly not the nicest guy in the room. I'm not the most charming guy in the room. I might have been the guy who was willing to work the hardest at it. And I think, to your point, if you have a passion and a desire to be in this industry, Get your foot in the door. Get your foot in the door, and then work work hard for it. And opportunities will open up. And not all of them you're going to connect the dots exactly to where you want to go. I mean, I certainly, at times, took on roles that weren't the most exciting to me. But apply yourself, work hard, put your team first. Um, I think that's the best the best I could probably give you. So I'm sure very soon you guys will probably be having what's common in the industry a, a going gold a gold party where you know you'll release to manufacturing but of course you know work continues on patches updates what have you but when the game actually is out yeah. and you've got fans talking about it being excited about it what what's i mean you've been through it with yeah. dead space and obviously with your other games at ea but when a call of duty ships and it is you know it has the full power of the you know the activision death star marketing machine <laughs> behind it I know not, they don't. They I don't know Star say. Wars, but EA <laughs> does, which is kind of strange. But uh, what have you thought about? Like what that moment will feel like for you personally within the context of your career when when Advance Warfare goes on sale? Yeah, you know it. it it's a curious question. Um, I think people handle stress and challenge differently, right? For me, I respond to stress. I just, I buckle down. I buckle down hard, and the, the harder the pressure, the, the more stress I get, the harder I work for it, right? Yeah. So I think for, for me, uh, two things are going to happen. One, massive anticipation, just see the fan reaction. I mean, it, that's why we do this, right? This sure. Is, it's all about just hopefully delivering something that fans think is quality and have fun with. When we do that, because I really do think Advanced Warfare is, a, a, you know, the most ambitious game we've made, and, and I'm proud of what the team has put off. If November 3 goes the way we hope and fans are having fun with it, I think I'm just going to collapse in the corner and maybe <laughs> curl up in a little fetal position and, and rest for a while. <laughs> That's fair. And then when you get a little distance from it, because it's, you know, i got to be honest, like being a game developer, putting out something creative to fans, wondering what the response is going to be, it, it's kind of, you know, you're a little vulnerable, right? You're Absolutely. You're a little vulnerable to having, sure. as you know, right, as a, a guy who puts creative material out there, um, 
And then, you know, and then you get a little bit of distance from it. And I look forward to celebrating. I mean, friends and family who have not had as much time with me as they should have because I've been putting it into Sledgehammer with the rest of the team. Um, I, I look forward to catching up and playing. So that moment will be... You don't no, come on. You don't really want to play after after three years, do you? Well, I think I, if you're just being honest, like come on, you've been playing it for this long, and you've been you've you've looked at this, you've stared at the same wall texture for <laughs> you know ten thousand times. Both don't yeah, you play other games, <laughs> not your own game? It, all of these are true, right? You have stared at the same textures a thousand times. <laughs> um, I can't tell you the number of times I've played the campaign. Um, there. I've never played my own campaign games Interesting. after I've shipped them, yeah. right? Like you go through that process, like that creative, emotional release of getting into fans, it's hard. You know, and I've heard of actors who won't see screenings of their movies. I've heard done. that, yeah. Um, by the way, I'm not in any way trying to say I'm like them um, <laughs> or what we do is like that. But Michael Condry, the Kevin Spacey no, of video game development. Not, not <laughs> quite the opposite. It, uh <laughs> But there is something humbling and vulnerable about putting it out there. But MP, yeah. for sure, I'll be playing with fans. I look forward to that. Nice. Um, and I look forward to playing a lot of other great games that are coming out this year and next from all the other talented developers in the industry. Well, excellent. Uh, and I normally, at this point of the interview, I would ask where you're going to go on a uh, on a much-needed vacation. Yes. But well, I already have the answer. It's the You're going to the Caribbean to go for two weeks, no internet, unplug everything, throw the phone in the ocean. It certainly sounds nice. Yeah, no, I look forward <laughs> to it. I, uh, where would we go right now? That shows you just how deep we are. You probably game, don't right? want to tell fans where you you just want you don't you want to be left alone on vacation. <laughs> I think there's probably some of that true, and I certainly you know there is a well deserved one for everybody who's worked on this game, hopefully myself included, to get some. But yeah, no, right now it's all about just full, you know, heads down, getting to November 3rd. It's exciting. It's right around the corner. Having this chance to talk with fans with you is exciting. So, again, my journey is my journey, and I would never encourage anyone to try and path out their career. But to your point, it's an amazing place to be. It, uh, it's something that if you, if you want to go after, you know, put your heart and soul into it, and it'll give you everything back. And hopefully in November 3rd we'll see that, you know, it was, it was worth the energy. So see, when you don't even, you know, this is a guy without, who admittedly doesn't have the artistic talent, not a programmer, and look where he is today. <laughs> I mean, there is, I mean, that's, that is awesome that you can be in game development. I know it just probably sounds like I'm totally sucking up to you now, but I'm, no, I'm, I'm in genuine, genuine admiration for the fact, because I'm that way. Like, for me, it was, I've always loved video games. What can I, how can I be in it? Right. In somehow involved in it and make a living in video games. And for me, it was, well, I do have the writing talent. I was always good at it. And so this is my way. So the yeah. fact that you have ascended to where you are without, you know, you don't know how to program, you're not an artist, it's uh, it's admirable. And I it's something that. I think that people can take away from who are listening to this. Like, man, if I just have a goal and kick ass at that goal, yeah. and probably I can like get you, there. right? Like, it doesn't come easy, right? You had to work hard. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, And I think that's where. I think that probably to me is I, I'll be honest like I've I've spent a lot of time at you know con, you know really focused on the games I've delivered. Developers work hard, right? We undoubtedly. Play hard. We, undoubtedly, course. right? Like you, you work hard at this too and so that's probably the only only thing I would say is, you know, put your hearts into it. And I know that sounds maybe a little cliché, right? Like I'm sure everybody across lots of industries put their heart at it and and don't have all the opportunities that they would they would want. Um but for me, it, it just comes down to saying, look, just con just you know, commit yourself to that goal and that idea. And whether it's being the the least talented guy on the team, um, or you know, frankly, there's so many people that, and by least talented, I was referring to myself, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, whether you're now in operations or finance or marketing or PR or the creative side of game development or an engineer, like there are a lot of ways to contribute. It takes yeah. a lot of people. It takes an army of people. And um, takes a village. Takes a village. <laughs> And a village idiot, <laughs> again, <laughs> self-deprecating humor there, um, to do it. So there's a lot of ways to get involved and work hard at it. And there's more, there's more, um, there's more help available. There's more, you know, academic courses. Like you can, you, there's lots of schools. You can now. go to school for games design Absolutely. and development now from really great schools, right? USC's got an amazing, like USC, a fundamentally fantastic school. You can go all over the country to places that will help you be more prepared than probably you and I were. Yeah. And so take advantage of those. Thank you, Michael Condry. The game is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. You may have heard of it. 
November 3rd is the date you keep dropping. That's the day zero yeah. early access thing, right? If I give you extra money, I'll, uh, well, I can play a day early. Not yeah. you. We can send well, it to I you mean, personally. Well, I mean, you could personally give me some extra money. You've got a PayPal, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess November 4th is the wide release in That's the right. U.S. Uh, November 3rd, if you do the day zero early access thing. And we obviously, we've been covering the game all month long on IGN as part of our IGN First program. Um, we've got plenty more coming as part of IGN First. Thanks to you and your team for having us down to the studio, letting us do a bunch of cool content. And, uh, yeah, thanks for spending, boy, a good 35, 40 minutes or so yeah, with me, thank Michael. Thank you, Ryan. And thanks to fans. I mean, we, this is why we're here. So appreciate being able to reach out and talk to them directly through IGN. 